In today's video, we're going to be checking out the Elgato Wave DX. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to be using the limited edition Doom variant of the Wave DX just because we're celebrating the release of Doom the Dark Ages. I didn't want you to look at this microphone and think, oh, this is not the one that I have. This is the one that Elgato sent me, and I wanted to not only make content on this, but also compare it to other Elgato microphones now that I have the full suite. I've got the Wave DX, the Wave 3, and the Wave Neo. So that is something we're going to be looking into throughout this video. And it's also worth noting that right now I've got the Wave DX with a bunch of VSTs and the voice focus mode turned on inside of the Wavelink software. But as we get into the review, I'll turn that off and teach you how to set things like that up for yourself. But with that said, no faffing around, let's dive straight in. From the moment you plug the Wave DX in, you won't really have to do anything if you just want standard audio. And don't get me wrong, the microphone is great as it is, but I personally love it adding things like VSTs and playing around with Elgato's voice focus mode. And to do that, we're going to come over to the Wavelink software and this one right here will be your microphone. So I'm currently using the XLR dock. And over here we can adjust the gain. Now, typically what I like to do is find my normal speaking volume. So if we get OBS, you'll be able to see that my normal speaking volume is around about negative 10 to negative five decibels. If you're not there, you can open up this little panel and just increase the input gain ever so slightly and your microphone will become louder. But of course, that will mean you get a little bit more background noise as you do so. Now, I've already found my sweet spot at around about 48. Now, Elgato does have a one-stop shop if you want better audio and you don't want to have to worry about doing plugins and things like that. And that is very simply turning on voice focus up here. Switch it on and you'll be able to hear that instantly my voice has this really cool effect that gets rid of all the background noise. It makes my voice sound a little bit more enhanced. But just be wary that you can overtune this and all of a sudden you start sounding a bit robotic. Also, sometimes if you get really loud or you go high-pitched, it completely cuts off the audio. So as good as voice focus is, you just have to be careful when you're using it. It's a fantastic tool if you just want something that will get your stream audio or your recordings, whatever, sounding good without worrying about all the intricacies. You do just have to be cautious. So I'm actually going to go down here and I'm going to record a little sample of my voice that we can hear back with all the changes turned on and off. And this is one of the coolest things that I love. I've spoken about all this before, but let's go ahead and do it. This is a test recording coming from the Wave DX. Hopefully it sounds pretty good. So that is a little sample that we have it ready to go. And now if I go ahead and turn this guy on, I'll be able to listen to that audio back like so. This is a test recording coming from the Wave DX. Hopefully it sounds pretty good. Okay, so I can already hear the difference the voice focus is making, and then we can turn it all the way up, go all the way to the other end of the spectrum, and hopefully you're going to be able to hear the difference between weak and strong. I personally like to keep this around about midway, but again, it can get complicated if you try to combine voice focus with VSTs and plugins. So just for now, we're going to turn this off, and I'm actually going to give you a super simple guide on setting up VSTs to get the most out of the Wave DX. Let's go ahead and go to Add Effect, and we're going to start in Elgato's plugins down here. And if you don't have these, you can actually just tap the button right here, explore marketplace to naturally open the marketplace and you'll be able to download all of the things that I'm going to be showcasing to you right now. So opening this one up once again, we're going to go down to Elgato and then compressor. And then it's going to give you a little sentence that you have to read and it'll automatically do the levels for you. Vocal compression is the secret to sounding pro. Let's do this. Cool, so then we just want to grab this slider and drag it down to around about the top bits, like so. So negative 19 to negative 20, that will be fine. And then the only other thing that I would change personally is to go up here, change the release to around about 30 to 40 milliseconds. So again, we're going to go down to Elgato and then Elgato EQ. And there should already be a bunch of presets here. I personally like using Harris Heller's one because it seems to suit my voice. But then I would drop the highs down just a little bit because my voice is a little bit deeper than Harris's. Now, for anybody who's really interested in learning how to fine tune your voice and things like that, definitely try to get a basic understanding of how EQs work because they are incredibly powerful at bringing all of those wonderful tones in your voice and making you sound your best. All right, so let's call that one a wrap. The EQ is done. Next up, we're going to be adding a DSer. DSer smooth my sharp S sounds. Voila. Now, this one is entirely preference based. So make sure that you're going in here and playing your audio back as you're changing all of these settings so that you can dial in the sound that you want to create with your microphone. Elgato noise removal. 
Now this one can automate the process for you and you're going to hear that all that background noise just kind of disappears. But the issue with the noise removal tool, not necessarily Elgato's, but just all noise removal tools as a whole, they can be a little bit stressful on your PC. So if you're encountering any issues or you find that Wavelink is using a few too many resources, you don't necessarily need it, especially if you're going to be adding things like background music. So for this one, I'm actually going to have to turn my audio on so I can monitor it. Recording coming from the Wave DX, hopefully it sounds pretty good. This is a test recording coming from the Wave DX, and that's pretty much it. That is how you set up the Elgato Wave DX with all of your VSTs that come straight from Elgato themselves. No going around searching and installing things. Now, the only other thing that I may tweak, you can see that in OBS, I'm still between sort of negative 15 to negative 10, negative 5. I keep bouncing around this sort of range right here, which isn't bad by any means, but what you can do is you go into the compressor itself, and you can disable auto makeup gain and you can just keep talking as you are and just slowly bring that up so it automatically gets you between negative 10 to negative 5 or negative 5 to 0 depending on how loud you want your microphone to be perceived so i'd say i'm around about here at plus 10 gain and hopefully if we go ahead and turn all of the vsts off you should be able to hear a difference between my voice now and my voice now when I have all the VSTs turned on. One other thing you can do if you want to be a little bit extra and you have a really beefy PC, which again, I don't recommend you do this because there can be issues, is turning on voice focus and using this alongside all of the VSTs. Now, this is definitely overkill. And like I said, it eats up resources. But for me personally, when I'm doing voiceovers, I like having all of these effects applied to make sure that I'm getting the best audio possible when I'm telling a story or reading a script. Okay, so I've showcased how to set up the microphone. I've showcased how to do VSTs and voice focus and all the Wavelink stuff. The only thing that I have left to do is the comparison between the Wave DX, the Wave 3, and the Wave Neo. So everything you're hearing now is from the Wave DX with no VSTs, no voice focus, just raw audio from the microphone. Now, bear in mind, this is an XLR mic. The Wave 3 and the Wave Neo are USB-C mics. Okay, now we are using the Elgato Wave 3. The only thing that I've changed throughout all of these recordings is normalization, just to keep everything the same sort of volume. But there's, again, no EQs, no fancy stuff, just me speaking into a microphone. And now we have the Elgato Wave Neo. Now, I do want to say for anybody who's thinking about price, this being the cheapest option and the DX being the more expensive one, you do get a lot of technical benefits when you use XLR microphones. But if it's just audio quality that you're worried about, don't be afraid to start with something like the Wave Neo because when you combine it with software like Wavelink, it really can bring the best out of the microphone to make it sound way more expensive or valuable, however you want to phrase that. Because in this day and age, where technology is as incredible as it is, quality isn't determined by price. It's determined by the company, the manufacturer, and the time, the love, the effort that they put into things. And I think that is where Elgato shines. Okay, so I think that pretty much wraps up this video. If you have any questions about the Wave DX, please leave them in the comments. I try to respond to every single comment I get on this channel. And of course, if you're thinking about buying the Wave DX, head to the link in the description and you'll be able to get 5% off your purchase when you go directly through Elgato's store using code HERO. If you use the code, it helps support everything that we do on the channel and it really does mean the world. But for now, make sure you subscribe to the channel for videos just like this and check out the entire Doom collection because it's so damn cool. I love your faces. You're amazing, you're beautiful, and I'll catch you in the next one.